lot of guests. So we have earning season upon us now. And what that means is we have lots of pundits and YouTubers telling us how to trade this earning season. And uh, what you see here is Kramer telling us, don't try it. It's all luck. Don't try to outstart, outsmart the system. Instead, trade after earnings. And that's what a lot of these YouTubers are saying. We all remember Kramer from when he said, don't worry about Bear Stearns, maybe a month before it went to zero. And I think most of this is bad advice. So I'm creating a video of my own to give you some good advice. Now, if you don't know me, you might think, who am I to give you good advice? Um, I trade earnings consistently and my earnings trades for 2019 are 90% accurate. You can find that in Exposing Earnings, my earnings newsletter. There's a track record of everything we've traded and you can calculate the probability if you don't believe me. But the whole idea here is that I believe most of these people are wrong. I think maybe they're lazy or they don't have the analyses tools to predict earnings properly. So instead they sit the earnings trades out and they miss these jumps. For most earnings trades, you'll see a gap. You'll see either up gap or down gap. And it's pretty large in most cases. It moves the stock outside of the trading range. And that's that gap that we want to capitalize on. We want to be able to predict which way it's going to go and capitalize on that gap. That's the hard part, but it's possible if you know how to do it. So I'm going to show you a few things. One is I'm going to show you um, how to get a basic benchmark on that probability. So I'm going to walk you through this trade. This is a earnings trade on STZ, Constellation Brands. And for this trade, we made about 100% ROI, which is roughly standard for an earnings trade using long calls. So I bought right here, I bought four STZ $200 calls at $240 each, and then I sold them for $450 each. So that's something like $800 profit, which is around 100%. ROI. And what you're seeing is that movement from here to here. Now, how did I know that it would move up? I didn't know 100%, but I knew probably 80% or so. When I get into an earnings trade, I want a high probability and I also want a good payoff curve. That is, if I'm right, I want the movement to be large. And if I'm wrong, I don't want the movement to be large. And that's one of the aspects of calculating whether to get in a trade or not because a lot about the the technical details about performing earnings trades correctly are can you balance that risk reward so if you ever go to my exposing earnings newsletter you'll find that i categorize stocks as per what their earnings um, risk reward curves and probabilities look like so the categories I have here, for example, Phoenix, which is a stock that is likely to move up more than down and is more likely to have a high movement upward than a high movement downward. And then I have another category, Fair Dice, which is probably the worst thing to trade because it's more or less 50-50, and that's where you lose money unless you're playing some sort of um, short volatility trade. All right, so let's walk through this STZ trade. So the first thing I usually want to do is get a benchmark probability for how it's going to work. And you can do that by going to stocksearning.com, typing in your ticker, and it'll tell you overall what happens over earnings for that ticker. Most of the time it's going to be 50-50, but some stocks do have a pattern. STZ does have a pattern. 66% of the time it goes up, but that's your benchmark. This only takes earnings into account. It doesn't take quarters into account. As a stock reports earnings four times per year, each quarter has a different profile. Now, that profile is important because some stocks, for example, IBM. IBM tends to sell off on earnings overall. 
you see that IBM is down 71% of the time over earnings. But that's not some sort of, let's say, average probability. It's a better way to put it is 71% of the quarters sell off. In other words, IBM has a seasonality to it. So while it sells off 71% of the time, the times that it doesn't sell off is a predictable set of times. If you look at this other site, Option Slam, you can go back up to five years and check out which way it moves quarterly. So what you do is, let's say I want to look at IBM this quarter, I'll go back four and see if it's green or red, go back four again, see if it's green or red, and then count those. So for IBM here, we have one green and then three reds. So that's 25% of the time it goes up, which is in line with this benchmark probability. However, as I know from my previous experience trading IBM, certain quarters are more likely to go up. And I think in this chart, it's showing that this winter quarter, IBM has a 50-50% payoff. I think in the past it was higher. I do my own back testing, so I get the actual numbers back to as far as I want. But um, if you don't have that type of back testing experience or coding ability, you can just use option slam and eyeball it. So we'll start out with a benchmark probability. That'll tell us what our bias should be. So for SDZ, we've got a 66% upward bias. Then we'll go back to option slam or use your back testing to find whether that's true for this quarter. And indeed, we find that going back, this was the last one, right? Going back four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. You can see that it's mostly upward. So this is like three out of four or 75% probability that it's going to go upward. So that's your probability. You can do other things too. There are many other small tips to kind of get a more precise probability for which way the stock is going to move. But that's only one aspect of earnings trading. Another is calculating that risk reward payoff. Generally, a glamour stock such as Apple or Netflix has a higher downward um, potential movement than an upward potential movement and vice versa for less known stocks, non glamour stocks. You can check that out often by looking at something like um, price to earnings ratio relative to the industry it's in. So look at that for STZ. Just find the price to earnings ratio for the industry in which the stock sits and then look at that individual stock's price to earnings. And we see that STZ's price to earnings is 15.5. Now compared to the beverage industry, which is 31.1, that's really low PE. That means you're going to have a more convex, in general, a more convex payoff curve. What that means is if SDZ gives a good earnings report, it's going to fly high. And if it doesn't give a good earnings report, it's not going to fall all that much. Now, I don't really use PE myself. I use a more complex ratio. I'll show you that chart here. So I calculated EBITDA to EV. And I plotted it. And what I'm looking for generally is a upward trend which means it's getting more convex. But I'm also looking at that number. So here, this number is relatively average. So I'd say this payoff curve is more or less linear. Um, when you look at the PE and you integrate that into the information we have, you might say that it's kind of leaning toward convex. And that's something we want. So the probability is in the, in the bull's favor, and the payoff curve is also in the bull's favor. And this would tell me this is a pretty good earnings trade to make uh, in terms of risk reward. So I would categorize this type of trade as either a, a Phoenix or a one wing Phoenix. You can go to my earnings handbook to get those, um, those types, those categories and their details. But that, in, that alone, just the uh, probability plus the payoff curve tells me, okay, this is a 
something worth trading. And uh, sometimes I'll only look at those two things if I don't have a lot of time. For example, if the stock is reporting earnings tomorrow, I may as well dip in there with a call option or a more complex options trade. And that's pretty much the basics of, of setting up an earnings trade. So what else do you have here? Uh, a couple more things you can look at to get a grasp on which way a stock is going to move. Um, so let's say UAL recently reported earnings and we don't have that movement yet because we have to wait one more day. But if you see an upward trend before earnings, you can look out as far as a month or so. That's generally indicative of a good earnings report. You're having a lot of um, insider information leaking out and people are buying prior to earnings because they're expecting good news and vice versa for downward trend. That can help you predict which way it's going to go. If you see UAL trending downwards, but all of your probabilities and everything else point upward, you might want to stay out. Again, that depends on your risk reward curve. Another thing you want to look for is similar earnings reports um, in an industry that you're looking at. So a precise example would be Nike. Let's say Nike reports earnings and it falls. Well, a similar stock, Foot Locker, is going to fall as well. They're correlated. People holding the stock see that Nike's earnings didn't perform well, so they sell their stock thinking that uh, Foot Locker is also not going to perform well. Actually, in general, that's a good setup for a long earnings trade because your expectations or analyst expectations for the EPS or whatever earnings news is going to be coming out that's relevant to that stock is lower than average. The expectations fall. Therefore, it's easier to surprise. Also, you're getting in at a lower price. So the risk reward curve changes. The probability probably doesn't change, but because the risk reward curve changes, it's really um, from a statistical standpoint, it's a decent idea to get into a trade with something like an option that will limit your downside. So, I mean, those are the basics. There's a lot more to earnings trading. Um, I have a chat room in exposing earnings that you can you know, throw your questions, pick my brain with. Um, if this interests you, if this video is useful, leave your questions below and I'll compile them for another video in the future.